This is the work of Sauron. I know you believe this ring is deceiving me, but I believe it is guiding me. Who is this man? He is no man. Galadriel. Hi, welcome to Cinema Express. I am Abhishek. I am Prashant. Uh, we are here to discuss the Prime Video series, The Rings of Power Season 2. The first three episodes were released uh, this Thursday. So, we are here to talk about uh, what worked, what didn't and what to expect next. Okay, Abhishek. Uh, so, we watched all three episodes and uh, what were, what was your initial reactions? I, I felt that these three episodes were uh, much more punchier than the last the, season. The, than mm-hmm. the last season. Like, I can I can see them having worked on the pacing, the, the intensity. Was the most fascinating part easily was uh, the characterization of Sauron. Okay. Uh, because, like, till now, the, the audience knows Sauron as this, not even demigod, this god-like, huge, humongous, unseen villain, right? So, to get to know his character motivations and how he's, mm. like, uh, deceiving the elves, the dwarves, mm. uh, so th- that was the most fascinating aspect of it to me. There are some aspects of it that worked, there are some that didn't. For example, I, I, I wasn't really a uh, big fan of the opening sequence where uh, they, they have this coronation, like, yeah. where, uh, like, Adar backstabs him. That just didn't feel like a scary enough introduction. See, uh, Sauron is a yeah. dark cloud, okay? Yeah, and yeah. and uh, he's mm. really intimidating and he's a dark force. Uh, I don't see him uh, manipulating a couple of arts, even struggling to manipulate a couple of arts. Yeah, that should have been easy for him. Yeah. <laughs> he, he shouldn't be like giving this uh, big grand corporate speech to and, arts. Know, it and was a very generic speech yeah. where he's like, and it I'm didn't going work. to rule over the world, I'm the yeah. next dark cloud. It didn't yeah. work. I was hoping, see, we know Sauron has this grand manipulator, right? Mm. So I was hoping that that was also part of the scheme for him to be killed and all that. So having said that, that scene didn't work for me at all. But I did like how the uh, the black goo after he dies. Spoilers, I'm sorry. And uh, after he dies, uh, he becomes this black goo and that multiplies and he becomes sort of this venom-like character. Like a, like a cell growing yeah, yeah, into yeah. this dark figure. Yeah, right? and then he stumbles his way out and mm. uh, he kills everybody, he kills mm. uh, every living organism from rat to a human. Mm. And then he becomes the Halbrand we know from yeah, season one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that introduction was amazing for me because it was really creepy and mm. uh, the effects were really cool. Mm. I did not like the the mm. this, this peach scene that you were yeah, talking yeah, the, about. The blonde, uh, yeah, yeah, the speak, blonde right? Because there's a shot in the first season where he's shown among orcs and like they, yeah. they just like move away move from away, him. Yeah. This intimidating huge... Uh, that was like, a really cool scene. Uh, dark figure, right? Yeah. This wasn't not like that at all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, apart from that, like wh- what do you think about Sauron throughout the series? So the, the whole Anatar deception thing, it, it, they've started to establish that, right? There's a lot of material here uh, that Tolkien's written, uh, right from the fact that Sauron used to work for a blacksmith before, mm. like he worked uh, for Morgoth, right? Mm. Which is why he's able to help Celebrimbor. There's the fact that he deceives everyone, first the elves, then he goes the with the dwarves. Yeah. So they've started to establish those things. Mm. But yeah, it, it, we, we need to see how, uh, how much of it they actually bring into the character because without explaining these things he just comes across as any other like villain right like you said like a corporate villain yeah. kind of person who just wants to rule over uh, the world because uh, there's, a, there's a line in the series that says Sauron just doesn't want to rule over this wasteland he's, he's himself as like the ordered ruler of Middle Earth right mm. so yeah he's, 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 see he's the servant of Morgoth mm. and Morgoth is anti-creation itself mm. so uh, Sauron is someone who sees himself as this like powerful being he's like mm. a god basically mm-hmm. so to see him a struggle to manipulate even a couple of arcs doesn't uh, seem right for me and he's a master manipulator and that's a big part of his character and uh, we could see him deceiving the elves a little bit but even though his uh, scenes work well the elves come off a little stupid yeah. if I may say <laughs> compared to him mm-hmm. because uh, it, it feels like they're being easily manipulated yeah it Elrond seems to be the only person who, seems who has any common sense at all uh, yeah uh-huh. right he, he seems to, to me he was the the conscience of the season the, mm, yeah the, he's the, the heart of the season, season. Yeah, b- because they just seem too easily swayed by the idea of the, the rings. Elves are mm. supposed to be the smartest beings, they are supposed to be the wisest beings. So it, it didn't come across very convincing on like why they'd, they'd see this, these rings and especially the new character that gets uh, 
Uh, the ship ride. He just sees this ring and he he wears it and he comes and tells everyone this is the solution and yeah. like it, it it just. I think that's part of Sauron's yeah. manipulation too because he poured himself into these rings, right? Mm. So maybe the moment Kierden mm. saw the ring, mm. he was manipulated instantly. Maybe that was part of Sauron's power. Yeah. Uh, but see, coming to elves, mm. I really like Elrond's characterization this season because. Mm. As I said, he was, seems to be the only character with any kind of common sense. Mm. And uh, very particularly I liked his scene with Kierden, the shipwright. Yeah. Where they bring up an important theme of the Art show. Yeah. yeah. And this is interesting because um, Tolkien himself draws from a lot of religious texts. Mm. And he's a theologian. Yeah. Uh, but interestingly here, the elves that are deceived by Sauron seems to be the most uh, yeah. spiritual and religious. Mm. Mm. Whereas Elrond remains like an agnostic figure and he's the only one with the common sense, which I found very interesting. And and yeah, the whole uh, art versus artist debate is like, I'm, I'm still divided. We know Sauron is evil, yeah. but the ring still help elves and the dwarves, right? Yeah. So, it's like, I, I wish they had explored more of that because I really want to be divided about uh, whether to, whether th what the elves have done is good or not. I don't want to be divided about whether Sauron is good or not. Yeah. I want him to be a clear antagonist. Mm -hmm. That's how uh, the Tolkien's uh, stories are yeah, structured, yeah, they, right? They, they do have these very uh, in-depth philosophical discussions, mm. right? These these poetic discussions about, for example, in Return of the King, it's like what, uh, Mary or Pippin, he's wondering why was I put in this situation, and yeah. Gandalf uh, tells him like it's it's not really up to you, it's how you. So those philosophical discussions, I think, uh, are something that would be interesting to see here as well. The best thing about Tolkien's universe is that he even though it's about uh, orcs and elves and all these fantastical creatures, they still deal with existential themes. They still talk about what it means to be a person, what it means to be alive. And um, there is an amazing scene, not to go back to the old films again, mm. but there's an amazing scene in, I guess, Two Towers, mm. where Gandalf talks to Mary about what happens after someone dies. And, mm. and uh, that's a beautiful scene. And, and see, the, uh, those are some of the themes that I wish they explored a lot more in the, 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 the series. And um, I, I understand that they're trying to go for some kind of a moral ambiguity, mm. but sometimes you don't need that all the time. Really, like come across. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's so we, even for, to take the character motivations, for example, right? Mm. Uh, we know what it meant for Bilbo Baggins to leave the Shire and like why he was an outcast in the in the adventure mm. world that he goes to. But here it. The explanation more seems to be okay. She sees a fascinating uh, person, so she just like leaves her whole uh, group of. You mean Nori? Uh, yeah, when she decides to leave the stranger, Nori and Poppy, uh, but not Gandalf. Exactly. So <laughs> she just leaves the whole uh, thing and like comes along with him on this adventure. We we don't know why this character is doing that. We don't know how this character feels about it. Mm -hmm. There's one line that says she misses home, but. See, I, I, the stranger character who's, who's they are all, uh, they, they almost confirmed that it was Gandalf, mm. but I don't know why they're still teasing it out. Uh, maybe yeah. they have some kind of a play, like mm. a play there, uh, in which case I'm interested, but they're stretching it out a lot yeah, more. Just tell us he's Gandalf or not and, and just yeah. like give us more of that character. Yeah. All yeah. he does for three episodes is just, he's just walking, walking, walking. Yeah, we know he's nothing Gandalf, he's there. going to like join these yeah. people. He's, he's an Ishtar at least, that yeah. much is established. Mm. Yeah, like you said, mm -hmm. the hobbits are not as fleshed as mm -hmm. we would like them to be, right? Mm -hmm. The Brandyfoots. Yeah, the hobbits and also I think the Numenor angle wasn't uh, okay, yeah. like written well. It seems like a very generic uh, political power struggle mm -hmm. happening in a in a very separate way. That the whole eagle comes so with me, this guy is is going to be the king. Uh, she used the palantir, so we're going to go against her. Uh, once again, they were very like hastily done. Mm. Uh, this whole Game of Thrones setup of this this power grab. Uh, See, the the, the Numen Numenor is a very interesting land, and mm. it, it's filled with like uh, near perfect immortal men, mm. almost immortal men, right? Um, Except for the production value, I didn't see much dimensionality to the Numenorean people. They were supposed to be these, uh, like, not exactly uh, men that we see in Middle Earth, mm. not exactly hills, but somewhere in the middle. They are yeah. supposed to be wiser. Yeah. To see them uh, quarrel between themselves mm. is, I, I feel like the, co the whole internal quarrel seems to only direct itself towards some political angle. Mm. It didn't feel like Lord of the Rings to me. A lot of the Rings deals with politics a lot, of course. Mm. Uh, f for example, if you ah. see Rohan in Two mm. Towers, mm. there's a lot of internal politics going on, mm. but there, it, it is also tied with the uh, overall, yeah. Yeah, overall plot and overall uh, everything. Here, it just seems like an isolated political mm. quarrel mm. That's just, that would fit more inside a Game of Thrones universe. Mm. 
for example it was it, it was more like who's grab who's trying to grab the throne or what i i didn't get that and uh, the only thing that is interesting for me in numenor is is elendil elendil because you know what he's going to end up doing he's yeah, he's going to yeah. lead his people uh, numenor is going to fall mm. and he, he's kind of like the nova mm. uh, tolkien himself Uh, talked about how Elendil is is inspired from Noah yeah. mm-hmm. and how he'll build an ark or something to save his people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love how he's not a straight away great leader. Mm-hmm. He's trying, he's struggling. Mm-hmm. He nobody is listening to him yeah. <laughs> yeah. well. Yeah. And I would love to see him mm-hmm. like uh, climb up the steps of leadership and learn how to be a leader. Mm-hmm. And uh, I feel like Elendil and Isildur. I I wish they met meet sooner. Mm-hmm. so they can you know uh, i want to see that dynamics yeah 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 that that is a bit of uh, stretching even i felt the scenes were longer than they had to be mm. uh, uh, one thing one reason i can think of for this is because you have so many characters mm. like you you focus on one character for 10 minutes mm. you focus on one place for 10 minutes but th- th- those things make you understand what these characters are going through only at that moment right mm. you you're not really fully following them uh, like through the course of their feelings because you're lingering on them for this one particular bit of one episode and then you come back to them much later what happens in between is is something that we don't really get yeah right? and uh, uh, but but what the the dimensionality that was surprisingly good to me was the orcs okay uh, that worked for you of, yeah see, that's <laughs> a shot of them showing an orc baby like that that was such a nice touch right uh, <laughs> that yeah. i don't know i was really uh, see um uh, people are uh, quarreling about how uh, uh, the series has ruined mm. orcs by make, mm. giving them humanizing humanizing them, them a little bit mm. i don't see a problem in humanizing them mm. uh, per se but uh, and tolkien has written about uh, female orcs and them having babies mm. and all that they do have families orcs mm. but uh, aside from that it feels a little like if you're going to show orc babies and humanize them mm. do it properly and and don't you know combine traditional uh, portrayal of orcs mm. with them being like this really dark creatures mm. and then throw in this bit because mm. if you're going to humanize them humanize them a lot more mm. it's what i would say i i i you, you like that dimensionality to orcs i just i felt it was a nice little touch mm. uh because we we get a sense of what orcs are more than the fact that they're just these uh like ravages right see through season 1 mm. uh, they didn't humanize orcs mm. and and suddenly we're supposed to empathize with them just because they have a baby mm-hmm. that just came out of yeah. nowhere the, yeah. the the way that scene was staged was goofy for me mm-hmm. they just pan and then there's a orc baby yeah, yeah. <laughs> i just wish they had like um found another more uh, an intricate way to humanize the orcs that's mm-hmm. all i'm saying yeah i do understand uh, but what are you looking forward to what are your expectations from the rest of the episode you go first i'll let what i am most fascinated about is uh, in, in tolkien's work sauron takes a few hundred years to manipulate the the whole of middle earth right but in 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 a tv series you you can't really traverse that big mm. of a timeline so how do you convincingly so him he's he's kind of gotten into the mind of the elves now he's mm. he's getting into the dwarves mind as well after that he has the the men and the the whole nazgul thing of like how these mm. nine men uh, are created so that is something that i'm that was my point <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i was going to say the exact same uh, thing because uh, i am more interested to see how uh, the so how sauron's manipulation and his rings mm. uh, turn men into nazguls mm. because they don't turn nazguls right away mm-hmm. they first feel the power it, the, the rings actually do help them El, whether it's elves dwarves or the men and uh, i want to see how the men are corrupted by the rings and 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 later on they turn into these mm. like ghouls called nazguls and nazguls are one of my favorite parts about the mm. lord of the rings because they are really creepy and really really scary mm. and uh, yeah i'm i'm excited to see nazguls again <laughs> or at least the early versions of nazgul yeah and and i i do hope they they like kind of increase the intensity as they go by because there is mm. there are still some of the problems that the earlier seasons have where in 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 a lot of portions you are you're not really sure if this the scene is needed like mm. what is the scene doing in the lo- longer uh, scheme of uh, things uh, so I, i i hope when the when the war portions come which mm. is shown a lot in the promos I, i i hope things get more interesting as they go by okay i guess like but you are interested to see more of this series i think like it's it's a definite step up from the first season absolutely yeah, yeah. i i really do think they've upped their game here. yeah and i want to see more of sauron doing 
creepier stuff and more evil things yeah. and i just don't I, i know they've explored a lot of his manipulation mm. manipulative side i want to see the other things as well mm. where he's a master craftsman where he's a uh, he's a uh, i i want him i want to see him commanding armies and and fighting a lot more i want him to do more evil things mm. and uh, <laughs> that's where i leave it yeah. and um, thank you guys for watching and tell us what you think about the new season in the comments below